Okay, let's start with 42. Mrs. Williams is deciding between two field trips for her class. The Science Center charges $135 plus $3 per student. The Dino Discovery Museum simply charges $6 per student. So there's, there's no fee um, that stands alone on that one. For how many students will the Science Center charge less than the Dino Discovery Museum? So this, is, this problem is actually very similar to the kennel one, 36. Um, we, can make a, we can make a system and then set an inequality from that. You could also make a table, okay? But these values are a lot higher when you look at your options. You don't want to have to make a table with all of those numbers. So let's write an equation here. We're going to have two things. We're going to have the Science Center and we're going to have the Dino Discovery. So I'll do the Science Center and I'll do Dino Discovery here. The Science Center charges $135 plus $3 per student. Remember per? It's going to signify you to multiply. So the Science Center is 135 plus $3 per student. The Dino Discovery simply charges $6 per student. So Dino equals 6 times the number of students. Since I have two S's here, I'm going to change this to C for center. So here's my system, and S is going to stand for the number of students going on the trip. Okay, I want to know how, for how many students will the Science Center be less than the Dino? So I want to know when the center is going to be less than the Dino. Well, once you take that, just substitute in for each side. The Science Center, how much does that cost? Well, the Science Center car charges 135 plus 3S. I want to know when this will be less than the Dino, which is 6S. Now you have a simple inequality, one inequality with vari one variable which is on both sides. We need to solve this. Get your like terms together. Since I have more S's on the right, I'm going to get this over there with it. To undo that, I subtract 3S. Now I have 135 is less than 6S minus 3S is 3S. Divide by 3 to get S isolated. And then remember what S stands for. So S stands for the number of students. The number of students has to be what compared to 45? We'll read this symbol. It has to be more than 45 because you have to turn it around since students is written after it. So now I can go up here. For how many students will a science center charge less? It would be less if the student is more than 45. So the answer is C. 43, the solution set of an inequality is graphed. The graph shows the solution set of which inequality. Okay, so you could solve all four and see what comes out to this. You also might want to write an inequality for this graph. So what does this graph represent? Well, I know I have a negative 3. And let's just say x, because I see x's in all of these. So how does x compare to negative 3? Is it less than, more than, is it equal to? Well, since this is filled in, I know it's greater than, I know it's greater than or equal to, because it's filled in and the shading is to the right. Now, think about this, guys. Eliminate some answers you know are wrong. We're going to end up with a greater than or equal to symbol. Remember with inequalities, the direction of your symbol can change if you multiply or divide by a negative number. However, you can't all of a sudden come up with this or equal to part if you didn't start with it. So I already know that A I already know that A and C can be ruled out. And they can be ruled out because they're not having an or equal to symbol. So all I have left to solve are B and D. Let's solve both of them, and let's see what gets us down to x is greater than or equal to negative 3. With B, I would subtract 5 from both sides and get 2x is less than or equal to negative 1, negative 5, negative 6. Divide by 2 to isolate x. x is less than or equal to negative 3. Well, these numbers, negative 5 is less than, and negative 5 is not a solution. So it has to be D. Let's check it. Minus 5 from both sides. I have 2x is greater than or equal to a negative 6. 
divide by 2, x is greater than or equal to negative 3, d is correct. So again, don't assume that the direction of this symbol, that it couldn't have been this one, because if we had to divide by a negative or multiply by a negative in this work, the sign would have flipped. But you can assume that these won't lead you to that. It has to start with the or equal to part if it's going to end with it. Perfect. And then number 44. A baseball team has $1,000 to spend on supplies. The team spent $185 on a new bat. And new baseballs cost $4 each. So the inequality, 185 plus 4B, is less than or equal to 1,000, can be used to determine the number of baseballs that the team can purchase. Which statement is true about the number of baseballs? Which statement about the number of baseballs it is true? So because they gave you the inequality and they're asking you about the number of baseballs, but we don't know what it is, the first thing I would do is solve that, and then we'll read our options. So we have 185 plus 4B is less than or equal to 1,000. That makes sense because they only have $1,000 to spend, so they can't spend more than that. They can spend all of it, but no more. Let's solve this for B. So subtract 185 from both sides, and you're left with 4B is less than or equal to 815. Now divide by 4. Looking at this, you're probably thinking this isn't going to be evenly divisible. That's okay. We can have a decimal answer for the, for the inequality. We just may have to use some logic with these statements. So B has to be less than or equal to 203.75. Okay. So the number of baseballs, remember what B stands for, baseballs purchased has to be less than or equal to 203.75. They can't buy 0.75 of a ball, so really they can buy less than or equal to 203 new balls. Okay, let's read the options and see what we have. The team can purchase 204 new baseballs. No. If they buy 204, they'll be a little bit over their budget, so that's out. The minimum number of new baseballs they can purchase is 185. Well, that's not true. They could purchase one or none. The minimum could be any number, really. The absolute minimum number that they can buy would be zero. The maximum number of new baseballs they can purchase is 185. Well, they could buy 203, so that's obviously not the max. The team can purchase 180 new baseballs, but this number is neither the maximum nor the minimum. That is correct. They can buy 185. They could also buy 190 or 120. None of those numbers are the max or the min. Your answer is D.